Talk to who? Well, just tell me what your name is. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was born in Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. That's enough. You talk about how old you are, Uncle Fountain. You, well, how far back do you remember? I remember. Well, I'll tell you about it. Things come to me in spells, you know. I remember things uh, more when I'm laying down than I do when I'm standing, when I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. Now, in my boy days, why, uh, boys live quite different from the way they live now. But boys wasn't as mean as they are now either. Boys live to. They had a good time, and the masters didn't treat them bad, and they were always satisfied. They never wore no shoes until they were 12 or 13 years old. And now people put on shoes on babies, you know, when they're two years, when they're month old, I'd be, I don't know how old. Put shoes on babies, just as soon as you see them out in the street, they got shoes on. I told a woman the other day, I said, I never had no shoes till I was 13 years old. She said, what, well, but you bruise your feet all up and stump your toes. I said, yes, many times I've stumped my toes and the blood run out of them. That didn't make them buy me no shoes. And I've been, oh, oh you wore a dress like a woman until I was, I believe, 10, 12, 13 years old. So you wore a dress, though? Yes, I didn't wear no pants, and of course it didn't make boys pants. Boys wore dresses. Who did you work for, Uncle Fountain? When Who did I work for? Yeah. When I, you mean when I was a slave? Yeah, when you were a slave, who did you work for? Well, I belonged to um, uh, Burnley's when I was a slave. My mother belonged to Burnley's when my night never come, though. You have nothing to do. Time to cut tobacco. If they want you to cut all night long out in the field, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang, you hang your back. It didn't matter about your tired, being tired, you're afraid to say you're tired. They just, well. Yeah. You're not getting tired, are you, young friend? No, no, I ain't. I'm just same as at home. It's like I'm sitting in the house. And, uh, I was thinking about, oh, now you know how we served the Lord when I come along, a boy? How was that? We would go to somebody's house, and, uh, well, we didn't have no house like we got now, you know. We had these, what they call, log cabin. And they have one old, one, maybe one old colored man would be there, maybe he'd be as old as I am, and he'd be the preacher. Not as old as I am now, but he'd be the preacher, and they'd all sit down and listen to him talk about the Lord. Well, he'd say, well, I wonder, Sometimes you say, I wonder if we'll ever be free. Well, some of them say, well, we're going to ask the Lord to free us. So they say, well, we're, we're going to sing. Wonder shall I ever reach heaven. I wonder shall I fly. And they would sing that for about an hour. Then the next one they'd get up and say, let's sing a song. We're going to live on milk and honey. We by and by did. Oh, I can hear him singing now, but I can't, I can't uh, uh, repeat it like I could in them days. But someday when I'm not hoarse, I could tell you, and I could sing it for you, but I'm too hoarse now. And then he would sing. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to sing around the order. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could sing it for you. I'm going to sing around. Well, I wish you could too. And the, the, well, just someday when you come over here, and I'm not host. You get me to come up here, and I'll, I'll sing. I'll try to sing it for you. Okay, I'm going to do that. This is. Uh, Colored people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. You want to slip on the floor, tie it here and tie it there, just like a lot of uh, wild people. We didn't, we didn't know nothing. Didn't allow you to look at no book. And there were some freeborn colored people where they had a little education, but there were very few of them where we was, and we all had a what you call. I might call it now a uh, jail sentence. We just same as we were in jail. Now I couldn't go from here across the street, or I couldn't go to nobody's house without I have a note or something from my master. And if I had that pass, that was what we call a pass. If I had that pass, I could go wherever he sent me, and I'd have to be back. You know, you know whoever he sent me to. They, They'd give me another pass, and I'd bring that back, so it's to show how long I'd been gone. We couldn't go out and stay an hour or two hours or something like that. They'd send you, now say for instance, I'd go out to the shoulder's place, I'd have to walk, and I'd have to be back maybe in an hour, maybe they'd give me an hour, I don't know just how long they'd give me. But they'd give me a note so there wouldn't nobody interfere with me and tell who I belonged to. And when I come back, boy, I'd carry it to my master and give that to him. That'd be all right. But I couldn't just walk away like the people just now, you know. It was what they call, we were slaves. We belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows and hogs and all like that, have an auction bench, and they put you on, up on the bench and beat on you, the same as you're bidding on cattle, you know. Was that in Charlotte that you were a slave? Hmm? Was that in Charlotte or Charlottesville? That is in Charlottesville. Charlottesville, Virginia. They sell the women. Sell them in. Oh, they'd, they'd have a regular. I was sailed every month, you know, at the courthouse. And then they'd sell you maybe $200, $100, Now, if, uh, if my master wanted to send me, he never said, you couldn't get a horse and ride and walk. You know, you know you walk. You'd be barefooted, and cold. Nobody didn't make no difference. He wasn't no more than a dog, some of them, in them days. He wasn't treated as good as he treat dogs now. But still, I don't like to talk about it because it makes, makes people feel bad. You know. well, I, I could say a whole lot I don't like to say. I won't say a whole lot no. Colored people are free, you ought to be awful thankful. And some of them are sorry they are free now. Some of them now would rather be slaves. Mm. Which would you rather be, Uncle Fountain? Me? Which I'd rather be? <laughs> you know what I'd rather do? If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. Because you're nothing but a dog. You're not a thing but a dog. 